In the 1965 proclamation of Singapore, we proclaimed and declared that our goal was that Singapore shall forever be a sovereign, democratic and independent nation founded on the principles of liberty and justice and ever seeking the welfare and happiness of her people in a more just and equal society. Since that time, we have achieved much in pursuit of our goal. And the statistics tell the story of the tremendous progress we have made in our quest for a more just and equal society. So why is it then that inequality and social mobility are still issues today? And what is the difference between then and now? First of all, in our early years as a nation, the starting base for the majority of Singaporeans was very low, across almost all indicators, education, income, and home ownership. There was a greater sense of all being in a similar situation, or as some older Singaporeans have put it, we were all equally poor. However, things have since changed. Our economic progress has created prosperity for many, but it has also resulted, over time, in different levels of resources accruing to low, middle, and higher income families. It's natural for families to want to use their resources to help their children advance, be it in the form of extra educational material, enrichment programs, or social networks. As those parents who have accumulated more over our five decades of growth pass on the advantages to their children, who in turn pass on further advantages to their children, this has given rise to a new concern that children at the bottom end of the spectrum have increasingly unequal starting blocks, which will translate down the line into very different outcomes and hinder social mobility. At the same time, other deep-seated forces are also at play. In an era where growth is driven by the knowledge-based industry in which the well-educated and exceptionally talented reap more rewards than others, economic and social benefits quickly accrue to those at the top. This is exacerbated by rapid technological advancement. The structure of our economy, like that of many others, is seeing rapid change driven by technology, automation, and AI. Some of these changes have had the effect of worsening wage dispersion, threatening to deepen the divide between higher skilled and lower skilled workers. Lower skilled workers risk being shut off from the new opportunities being created. Meanwhile, as we have become more developed and gradually caught up with some of the most advanced economies of the world, our growth has naturally slowed. This new phase of our development coincides with our changing demographic profile. Our people are not as young as before. Within a few generations, we have gone from enjoying the baby boomer demographic dividend to dealing with the challenges of an aging population. This trajectory is not unlike that of other similar economies, such as Korea and Taiwan. A slower pace of economic growth directly translates into how much progress each new generation is likely to see. It can also lead to stagnation for lower skilled workers who are unable, who are unable to adapt or reskill. These trends and tendencies pose new challenges to our society that did not exist in earlier decades. Left unchecked, they will cause less advantaged Singaporeans to be left behind and to feel that the opportunities available can only be accessed by a privileged few. As the needs and viewpoints in our society continue to become more diverse, such a situation will make it easy for new fault lines to emerge between the haves and the have-nots or the will-haves and the won't-haves. These developments show that tackling inequality and maintaining social mobility are continuing challenges. They take different forms in different times, 
and each generation will have to address them as they manifest. The question for 4G leaders, therefore, is how we will tackle inequality and sustain social mobility in this time and on our watch.